I want to talk to you about this. The story I just told is, is a story of implicit associations. Um, every country uh, in the West loves to talk about unconscious bias right now. It's mostly bollocks, all right? Uh, bollocks. Um, thank you. There you go. Yeah, it's just, it's not real. Uh, unconscious bias training, Starbucks the other day. It, it, yeah, it's bollocks. Right? It doesn't work. If, if, if unconscious bias training is only the answer, if unconscious bias is the problem, and unconscious bias is not the problem, and the research I've been doing is setting out to try and prove that. The worst best managed diverse team is better than even the most highly managed, best managed homogenous team. So this is an interesting mix here. Because what it means is if you have a diverse team, the standard of the quality of leadership must be much better than if you have a homogenous team. This is one of the reasons that diversity is not taking hold in organizations. This is not about your organization. This is across the board, especially in larger, more hierarchical uh, corporates. It doesn't take over because they have a whole swathe of middle managers who are only good at managing homogenous teams. There are some markers of inclusive teams that I think are important. And um, they'll give me a chance to tell a story or two. <clears throat> so inclusive teams handle credit and blame in a very specific way. And I just want to point out right now that there is a difference between a team and a group, right? We use them syn like they're synonyms, and they are not synonyms. A team, an elite team, is not the same as a group of elite individuals. There is an investment that is implicit in teams. That means you have to do stuff for other people that will be both inconvenient and energy expensive, and that is my job. It isn't extra, it isn't discretionary effort. That is what it is to be on a team. Groups don't think that way. They think, I'm excellent, I've done my job. If you haven't, tough. You can see this most easily. Here's a basketball analogy for you, so if you like basketball, you'll get this, and if not, eh. Um, <laughs> Uh, it's interesting, I, I have to explain this so much more in England. Uh, I say, right, so basketball, there's five people on the court at any given time, and uh, I'm assuming you know that part, I'll skip it. But in basketball, you can instantly see the difference between a team, an elite team, and a group of elite individuals. It's easy, crystal clear. And you can see it when a shot is taken. Because in a group, when a shot is taken and made, you instantly know that they're a group. Because that shot's taken, and it doesn't matter how easy it is or how difficult it is. It doesn't matter if it's the hardest shot in the world that went in or if it's the easiest thing, a layup that with no contest that was supposed to go in. The moment that shot is made that, and the crowd roars because it's the finals or whatever, um, the first thing you'll see in a group is that person who scores will turn to the crowd. And, and they become like a solar panel for praise. Like, yes, yes. Warm me with your praise. Yes. And that's what they do as they run down the floor. They want everybody to know, yeah, me. 30,000 people in the stands. Maybe the coach is also clapping. Where they know there's an audience at home watching. Yes, me. I did it. And that's a group. When, when, when you're in a team and that shot is made, the first thing you, you see, no matter how difficult the shot or how easy, that shot goes in, and the first thing you see as the crowd starts to pour that adulation, the coach claps at that individual. The first thing you see is that person points to the person who passes the ball. And then you have to be really vigilant of your choices, because people make choices, choices make culture. People make choices, choices make culture. It's as simple as that. If you're vigilant about all your choices, you can make a huge difference. The idea that when we police the smaller infractions, we reduce, reduce the likelihood of egregious, of the, of the terrible infractions. Uh, and we also have the added benefit that when something really bad does happen, it's instantly noticeable. When somebody drops a mattress into a space that is pristine, everybody knows something terrible has happened. 